Hey, welcome back to Cash Keyboards. Today we got a mystery box from Cannon Keys. As you can see, I ripped the label off so you guys can't dox me. But other than that, I haven't actually looked into the box and see what it is. It does say on the side, box 60 gray. I wish it didn't say that because it kind of ruins the surprise, but uh, we don't know which gray it is. So let's get this open and take a look. Unboxing, you do start off with this little included promotional. This is a high move peach switch. Uh, I do like this type of promotion. I think it's really cool to like send a sample switch and a sticker. I'm also a sucker for stickers. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of just playing to my weakness. Uh, but it does look like a nice switch. I might actually order a set just because of this promotional piece, just to encourage them to keep doing this. Because again, I think it's pretty cool. Um, as you can see in this video, you're gonna, I'm gonna struggle with these uh, little bags because I got sausage fingers. Uh, but you know, if you, if you, if you know, you know, if you don't, you're lucky. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and put this, uh, put this to the side. Uh, the Bakken Echo 60 comes in a hard carrying case, which I think is really, really cool. Oh, it looks like we missed a sticker. We got another cannon key sticker, which is again, sucker for a sticker. This is actually a really premium feeling case. Uh, which at this price point, I wouldn't expect. Uh, unzipping it, it reveals the entire kit. Uh, I did get mystery switches along with my Bakken Echo, so I'm not sure what these switches are, what color the Bakken Echo is, uh, but I'm really excited to build it with you guys and for you to see what I got. Um, the switches look really, really cool. I like the color for them. We'll have to pull them up later and figure out what they are. They don't see on the package at all, um, so yeah, that's a pretty cool touch. They were also really affordable. I went with the mystery switch for this because it was also like $10 for the switches, which was crazy for a full set of switches. Uh, up in the upper netting, it looks like we have all the accessories to build this. This does come as a kit. It is a bring your own switch, bring your own keycap situation. Uh, but yeah, let's get into this. Pulling out the Bakken Echo, it's wrapped in this really, really nice cloth. I think that's a really cool touch. I've never really seen it before. It's got a ton of weight um, because it is a cast aluminum uh, case. Uh, be but before we unwrap it, we're going to go through these accessories. Pulling out first, we start with the O-ring. This is an O-ring like pressure fit build. There's no real screws that hold the plate in or anything like that, which I actually prefer. Next, we have our stabilizers. It looks like another sticker, which we're excited for. These are cherry clip-in stabilizers, so we'll need to put in a little work on them, but we'll address that later. Uh, next, we, it looks like we have the Allen for the daughter board, as well as the feet. Uh, next is the daughter board itself. This is a C3 unified daughter board with ESD protection and included JST cable. Uh, next up we have our plate. This is an FR4 plate. Uh, I do actually kind of like FR4 plates, so this is nice. And then lastly, our PCB. Comes in a really reflective packaging. I'm, I assume it's anti-static packaging. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it. Pretty much everything you would ever need besides switches and key gaps to build this keyboard. Now, going back to the, the case itself. Again, it's wrapped in this really, really nice cloth. And the big reveal, it is gray. Now, sometimes with cast aluminum keyboards, there can be small imperfections because they're not CNC'd. Uh, although this one does look really nice, we can see the reflections of everything that I'm filming and my studio lights. Uh, but I actually don't see any signs of imperfections on this. Note that some of the dots in the middle where the casting takes place can be sharp to the touch, so be careful. Uh, but this one isn't too bad. Also, I think this gray one might be a limited run or a special run because you can't buy the gray one that I know of. Let's take a look at the cloth they send with it and wrap it in. 
It is really, really nice. I'm surprised at the quality, and I love the Candy Keys logo on the side. I think it's a cool touch. For now, we're gonna set our case to the side for just a moment. We're gonna go ahead and open our PCB. The reason I do this is I don't like having a bunch of bags to open, along with the little bags as well. Uh, just because as you build a keyboard and as you get greasy and kind of luby, it can be a little difficult to open these. So we wanna go ahead and open it up and get it ready for the next stages. At this point, we can also inspect our PCB to see if there's any damages or anything weird that we can take note of before we start our build. Uh, you can see the shout out between Katano and Candy Keys, the collaboration for this. It is a hot swap PCB. It's got kale sockets, which is really cool. And I'm excited to jump in and get this thing built. All right, with that unbox, we'll go ahead and grab our case again. And we're gonna start with putting on our little feet. It's simple, there's stick on, line up the holes and you're good to go. I'm gonna flip it back over. It feels pretty good. It's not wobbling or anything like that. It feels really even. So let's move on to the next step. All right, now this is where most people will grab their daughter board and go ahead and install that. Uh, again, this is a C3 unified daughter board. It's got ESD protection and it comes with a JST cable. Typically people will install this now if they don't plan on doing any case mods or anything like that but I actually don't prefer to install it at this step. I like to actually wait and keep it outside of the case so I can test the PCB later when I get all the switches installed. But if you were going to install it now, you would simply take it out of the bag, grab your screws and your Allen wrench and screw it straight into the case. Easy as that. Do take note though, if you decide to install your daughter board at this step, you may actually have two bags of screws. Uh, there's no other screws in this build besides the daughter board. I don't know if they just package extra screws by mistake or by accident, but some people might get a little confused. The Allen wrench fits both sets of screws. They are matching in the same size, so it really doesn't matter, uh, but you do just need to screw it in. I hope they fix that in the future because if you're new to keyboards or have never built this keyboard before, you might get confused there, but only one set is ever used, so don't be afraid to use either set. All right, now it's time to address the stabilizers. Let's go ahead and get these out of the bag. Looks like we have another Candy Key sticker. That's pretty exciting. Bam, Candy Keys. Now these are cherry clip and stabilizers and they need a little bit of work. So we're going to go ahead and clip them and lube them. Uh, clipping stabilizers, not too hard. We're just gonna go ahead and grab the little stem and you'll see the two raised feet. Those race feet just need to be clipped off. This will improve the sound and the feel of the stabilizers. And it's really simple. You don't have to do this. It won't interfere or have any issues if you don't. I just prefer the sound when it's done. And also don't make fun of my clippers. We've been through a lot. They've, uh, they've seen their fair share. But we'll go ahead and get these clipped and we'll start lubing them. All right, once they're all clipped, we're gonna just gonna go ahead and grab our tool 5G0. We're gonna go ahead and lube our housings. I got this random wide brush in a lube kit a while back, and I wanted to see if it would fit in the housing. And to my surprise, it actually does. Now, I don't always recommend using a big brush, but I thought it'd be fun to see what happens. This is just like lubing switches. You want it to keep it really light. You want it to be like a ninja. You want the lube to be there, but you don't want it to be seen. So just use a light coat and you'll be good to go. Now that I've done this so many times and I've figured out which way I'd like to do it and I don't like to do it, we're gonna go ahead and put our stems back in the housing or stabilizers. This just keeps it easy going forward. If you've never done this before, just remember that there's two holes on the stem and one hole in the housing. The two holes in the stem match up with the one hole in the housing. The one hole in the stem goes in the back of the housing. So two holes front, one hole rear. Makes it really easy. Might be silly, but it's simple. Now we'll move on to lubing our bar. This I use dielectric grease and I just insert it just past the bend. I get a nice coat evenly around it and then I insert it into the stabilizer and clip it into place. It's 
really simple. You can move it up and down to verify you're in and you're good to go. Once you've lubed everything, now you just clip them in. You just line up the holes and you just clip them in. It's really simple, but it can be a little difficult. Just take it slow and it's really easy. You don't want to force them in. You don't want to bend anything. So make sure your holes are lined up and you'll hear the click. If for some reason it won't go in or anything like that, just make sure you have the right clip in the right hole. There's no shame in backing off and double checking. It's better than bending or breaking anything. When you have everything lined up, all you do is add a little bit of pressure and you'll hear it click into place. All right, now we have them all in. Ignore my greasy fingerprints. And we're gonna go to these switches. Time to open these up and figure out what they are. Uh, looking up on Canon Key's website, it looks like they are the Corbs Linear Switch by Tiny. They are a linear switch. They're made by Duroc. They have a white pink nylon top housing. They have a dark pinkish red nylon bottom housing. They have a pink palm stem with a 62 gram spring and they're a five pin and they claim they are factory lubed. Judging by the way it feels, they don't actually feel factory lubed. And if they are, it's very little. So we're gonna go ahead and crack these open and get them looped. So as always, we're gonna grab our buckets because we like to keep it organized. The buckets are, are really important. This keeps my switches nice and separated as I'm trying to lube them and keep track of everything. Not exactly great at keeping track of a lot of things, so this just keeps my workspace nice and organized. And I highly recommend it. Whether it's clear buckets, regular buckets, little boxes, it doesn't really matter. Just the more organized this is, the easier it is. The mystery switches with the Bakken Echo were $10 for a full kit that would support the Bakken Echo. So I was really excited that they were offering packages that would support a full build. I really don't like it when they offer packages and they're like, oh, just kidding. It's only half the switches you need. Also, this gives me an opportunity to try out my new switch opener. A big shout out to KWY Board because they recommended a Kelowana switch opener and it's the first time using it. And I must say, it works great. Huge thank you to you because I don't know how many switches I hand opened and how many overs I have that are almost useless. But back to the switch here, we got it open, looking at the stem and looking at the housing it doesn't really look like it has any lube on it. There's no shine when you look at it in the light, and we don't see any signs of actual white lube or anything like that. So with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and lube these. So let's head over and get these all opened and get to the lubing. All right, now that we've got our switches open, we're gonna go ahead and start off with lubing our springs. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a small bag from all the bags that came with this build. We're gonna dump all our springs in here I'm gonna grab our bottle of Super Lube. When it comes to this, you can choose which lube you use. Some people use 205, some people use other things. I personally like Super Lube. I use 15 drops for keyboards that are 60% in size. And it's really simple. It takes no time at all. Simply drop it in, shake for a few minutes, and then you're done. It can be a pain separating your springs out afterwards. So you just have to take things slow. But once they're lubed, they're lubed. You're good to go. So we're gonna pour them out in our tray. I'm using this new silicone mold that I picked up uh, just to see if it actually makes things better. I see the kits everywhere, so I wanted to give it a try. I did wanna get one in silicone just so I can clean it easier. Uh, so let's give it a shot. All right, now that you've heard about my new mold, let's go ahead and lube these switches. We're gonna grab our 205 and we're gonna lube our housings. Now with linear switches, I like to lube the side post and then I just go around in the middle. It's pretty simple. I just do that with each one of the bottom housings. Just remember when it comes to lubing, again, you want it to be there, but you don't want to see it. It needs to be a really light coat. You don't want to over lube. It's always easier to apply more lube, but it's not as easy to take lube away. Also, 
An easy way to judge is if you think it's too much lube, then it's probably too much lube. I just remember that and you'll be good to go. All right, we have our first batch lubed. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and place everything back together and assemble these. This is a lot easier than I thought. And I'm kind of mad that I didn't use a mold to begin with or a station, switch station, I think they call them. Uh, but yeah, so if you're in the market, I would recommend one. All right, all of our switches are back together. Everything's assembled. I'm just gonna pour them all back in my bucket. The reason I put them all back in the bucket is just because it's easier. If I have them all in one central location, I'm not trying to hunt them down when putting them back in the PCB. You know, it just makes life easier. The silicone molds do look like they get rather dirty from the lube, so we're gonna have to clean those. Speaking of cleaning, let's go ahead and clean up this workspace a little bit, and we'll get back to assembling our keyboard. All right, with the switches done, the stabs on the PCB, we'll go ahead and grab our plate. And this just simply sits straight on top of the PCB. You might have to work it over the stabs a little bit, but it's pretty simple. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a switch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a switch where all of our stabilizers are. So I can go ahead and throw a quick keycap on to make sure they sound and feel good. As long as they sound and feel good, then we're good to go. This can help later down the road. So that way, if we have a sound or a feel we don't like, we don't actually have to take apart a bunch of stuff. That doesn't happen too often with me, but it does happen. So it's a little tip. If you are building a keyboard or anything like that, this step can be helpful. All right, the switches are in and we'll go ahead and grab some random keycaps. And I'm just going to put them on and activate the switch over and over. Make sure it sounds and feels good. If it doesn't feel good at this point, you're easily able to tune them and either add or remove lube as needed. It's much easier at this step than after the entire board is assembled. If you're happy with your results, then you can go ahead and move on to putting all of your switches into the PCB and plate. All right, now it's time to put your switches into your plate and PCB. Remember to always check your pins and check which direction your switches are to go in. Just take it slow, take it easy, and it'll be over as soon as you know it. All right, all of our switches in. Now it's time to use our daughter board. I'm going to go ahead and plug our cable into the back of our PCB. And then I'm going to connect it to the computer just so I can test to make sure that everything looks okay. I do this by running software to help test the PCB to make sure all the switches and everything is working correctly. Unfortunately, I did try to screen cap it so you guys could see it, but I unfortunately had a bit of a PC problem. Uh, so I don't actually have that footage from that computer. Uh, I am working on that, so we don't have that in the future, but trust me, it works. Hooray. This is also a good time to note that there's no RGB on this board. So if you plug it in and you were expecting RGB, there actually isn't any on the Bakken Echo 60. Nonetheless, it's all plugged in, everything booted fine, and it looks like all my switches are working. So time to move on to the next step. All right, now it's time to bring our case back. Now that we've verified everything works, we're gonna go ahead and grab our daughter board and get it installed. With this, it's pretty simple. You just grab the screws and screw it in. That's about it. Uh, it does include this little tiny Allen wrench, and this can be a struggle if you have sausage fingers like I do. Uh, but just keep it slow. It's really simple. And, you know, you'll get it. All right, after struggling with those screws, with this tiny little wrench, now it's time to add some foam. Now this is personal preference. I want this board to be a little bit more muted because I'm not a huge fan of the hollow aluminum sound. I also don't like a ton of flex in my personal keyboards, so this will help reduce that as well. Again, this is personal preference. You can use any type of foam, 
or any type of sound dampening material or none at all. It's completely up to you. But this is two millimeter EVA foam. I really like EVA foam because it's easy to work with. And we're just gonna put one single layer in here. Also note, I didn't tape mod the PCB either. I kind of like the clacky pingy sound of aluminum. I just don't want it to be hollow sounding. Uh, I, it might be weird. It might be, uh, you know, just a me thing, but sound is subjective and that's what I like. So we're just gonna go ahead and make some dents and marks in this. And we're gonna cut the size. The mark in the middle is for the actual JST cable. I don't want to pin it under the EVA foam. I want it to be easily accessible just because the wires are super thin. So I don't want to put any unneeded stress onto it. So we're just going to make a slit so it can easily connect to the PCB. All right, once that's ready to go, it's O-ring time. This O-ring is super simple. All you do is fit it between the plate and the PCB. So you just grab one side, hold it with your finger, and then just stretch it around the keyboard. Super simple, super easy. I really like this way of mounting. I also really like that it doesn't take a lot of screws or a lot of effort to get in and out of this board in case I want to modify it, change it, or customize it. It's really nice knowing that if I want to change things, I can do it without having to unscrew or take apart a bunch of stuff. But with your O-ring on, go ahead and connect your JST cable. I forget to connect mine all the time, so don't be like me. And then you'll just line it up and you'll push the PCB into the case. There will be a little bit of pressure here. That is expected. The O-ring between the case and the PCB and the plate is gonna hold everything in place. If you gently sit it in and then apply a little bit of pressure, you'll feel it go into place. I personally think the easiest approach is just putting the back in first, and then if you lay the front in, and then just apply the pressure right in the front, I think this is the easiest way to slide it in. Once it's in, if you have a look around, make sure it's all even, and it feels good, you're ready to move on to the next step. Last step, keycap time. I chose the EPBT black on white hangle set. I chose the set because I ordered a mystery box and I didn't know what color the keyboard would actually be. Worried about that, I didn't want to go with a crazy aggressive set of keycaps that might not match. Lucky for me, black on white matches nearly anything and it matches really well with gray. And there's a lot of options in our keycap sets, from novelties to extras. I can pretty much trust that if the keyboard requires a unique size spacebar or a shift key or anything like that, EPBT is going to have it in my kit. And if they don't, I can order a specialty set that will match the rest of my base kit. And that's really nice knowing. Taking a closer look, you can see that their PBT their Cherry Profile, and their Die Sub. I really like the feel and the look of EPBT keycaps a lot, but it does come with a price. These aren't the cheapest out there, but I really wanted something nice for this build. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get these keycaps on there and see how it looks. And here it is. This is my Grey Bakaneko with my EPBT black and white hand gold keycaps. I love it. It feels great, looks great, I couldn't ask for more. I really, really enjoyed building this kit and I hope you liked the video, but we also need to hear how it sounds.
Some of my final thoughts. I absolutely love building this keyboard. I really like the sound and really like the feel. I wish I would have pulled the trigger on the mystery keycaps. It would have been really cool to be in a mystery from top to bottom. I think it's a great price for all levels of key builders. The mystery boxes are always fun. And this one is from a brand I trust. So that was really cool. I think it's a great kit to bridge the gap from normal keyboards to the more enthusiast side of keyboards. There's also some things to take note of. This is a kit. It means bring your own switches and keycaps. Again, it is a mystery box if you buy this one, so you never know what you'll get. And it is aluminum. It might not be the sound profile you're looking for. And remember the glossy ones tend to show signs of use, like fingerprints. Uh, also, this came with a cloth, so that's nice. But those are my final thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'd love you forever. And also the links to all the products featured in the video are in the description below. And that's the end. Have a good day.